Welcome everybody to your very first PHP tutorial. My name is Caleb Curry. I am the owner of the YouTube channel Caleb the Video Maker and Caleb the Video Maker 2, as well as my Facebook, Twitter, and my website, CalebCurry.com, of course, yeah. So, anyways, in this video I will be talking about PHP, and I'm going to be introducing this series where we will be learning a lot about what PHP is and so forth. So, if you have no idea what PHP is and you just either you're being forced to learn it for a job or you want to learn it or you uh, accidentally ran into this video somehow I'm going to be explaining what this is so PHP is a programming programming language it's what's known as a server-side and that I'll get into that in a minute so Mainly PHP is used to develop websites. It can be used to create uh, t t shell programs, through shell applications through the command line, but we're not going to be getting into that. So we're going to be developing websites with PHP. So I'm actually going to erase this beautiful content. I know, it took me hours, but oh well. So PHP is a programming language to develop dynamic websites and it, you can use it as an interface to connect to a database. So that's two main things. And my chalk's not working because I just wet the chalkboard real, real bad. So. Uh, there we go. Dynamic websites. and connections to databases. All right, so when you're creating a website or you're on a website, you often find these forms. So it'll be like, you have these boxes and so forth where you can put your username and password in. Well, that's what's known as HTML hypertext markup language. I just did a series over that, so if you're interested in that, you can go back to that. We'll be using HTML in this series. I expect a little prior knowledge, but I mean, if you don't know it, that's okay, you're not gonna die. But if you would like, go check out my HTML and CSS series. So that's what HTML is. That's used to create the forms. PHP, on the other hand, takes the information put within the forms and does something with it, such as puts it in a database or uses it to create more web pages within the website. So what is a, d a dynamic website? That's something that changes. The term dynamic right here, that means it can change its dynamic versus static. Static does not change, it is static. So static water, for example, dynamic changes, static does not change. So, let's go over a little bit on dynamic websites. I don't want to wet my chalkboard too much or it's not going to work. Probably shouldn't have got such a wet rag, but oh well. All right, so we can use what's known as a variable and we'll be getting into that in a future video. But in PHP, you can take values that are submitted on a form, such as a name, and then somebody puts their name in there. We can assign this to a container that stores that value. So I can name it name. Here's how you declare a variable in PHP. And if you're not really following me yet, don't worry. I'm giving a broad overview of everything PHP can do and then we're going to start very slowly I expect no prior programming language we're going to learn pretty much all the basic programming concepts so you're a way better programmer and then we're going to develop dynamic websites and database applications so we can store this in the variable name and then we could do something such as print name so what this is going to do, I'm not using exact syntax as it should say something like that you have a uh, wow I can't believe a semicolon at the end. 
but that is going to say, oh, it's going to print out Caleb. So I could do something such as print, and then within a print, I could say, welcome, and then put the name variable, name. And then it can say, welcome Caleb, so forth. So a dynamic website changes by what people do with it. So for example, if I change the name I put within this box, the end result is going to be different. That's what a dynamic website does. So, what else can PHP do? Well, we can connect to a database. And why would we do that? Well, if we have a user registration on our website, so for example, at the top you may see something like register, and then you can also log in. Well, you can do that with PHP. You can develop those systems. So, register, you may say, it may request an email, a username, and a password. So you put your email in, you put your username in, and you put a password in, right? Now, this is all going to be taken, and it's going to be given to a PHP script, right? And what that PHP script is going to do is it's going to make sure you're putting the right content in. It's going to try, because some people try and hack websites or just put random stuff in. It's going to check, is this really an email address? Is that really the proper format for the username for the website? Is that really, what? are they really trying to put a password in there? And if it passes all those tests through the PHP script, the PHP script will put it in a database. So, if you don't know what a database is, that's okay. Stupid fly, where did you go? We, I did a series over databasing. You can check that out if you want. There's a total of a hundred videos in three different series. I did a database design, a data type series, and then a complete MySQL series. But if you don't want to get into that right now, that's okay. You can check that out if needed, if you're confused on some of the database concepts. Basically, a database stores information. So a database has tables, and then we can give it appropriate rows. So here are the rows, this direction, which obviously a database isn't going to cross out their information. These are the columns. So an actual database may be something like this. Email, name, password. And then that PHP script sends this information and it puts it in here, it adds a new row. So it adds, it adds the email, it adds the name, and it adds the password. Then when you go to log in, so now I have a login page, it's going to ask for your username and your password. So let's say you put it in. These are also going to be sent to a PHP script. It's going to check, okay, are they the appropriate format for a username and password? If they are, they're going to check the database does it match? Is this username and password correct? If it is, it's going to send it back to the page and it's going to allow you to sign in. If it's incorrect, it's going to send it back to the page and you're not going to be able to sign in. And it will request you to sign in again. So that is just a basic use of PHP. Obviously there's a lot more, which I would get into it. I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm going to end it here, and in the next video we will be talking more about PHP, and we're going to be learning this in a very in-depth, easy-to-understand process. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you, and subscribe.